What's up, world? I'm the Determined Black Man, John Jay, and as usual, I'm determined to reach at least one someone that's listening to the sounds of my voice. touch on a subject that's um, trending across America uh, and that is Deion Sanders Deion Sanders Deion Sanders trending topic we're not going to talk about Colorado um, the, the Buffalo we're not going to talk about them just yet I just wanted to talk about Deion Sanders uh, this is an amazing day to be a JSU Tiger and a member of the JSU family now, for those of you who know me, you know I don't get excited too often, but uh, today I'm excited. We are all excited because we present to you, uh, we're going to unveil probably the worst kept secret here in Texas. <laughs> of course, this is a significant occasion because it is a pivotal turning point for JSU football and Jackson State University. First, I would like to acknowledge special appreciation for Ashley Robinson. giving you a little history of the HBCUs and government assistance. So generally, most HBCUs currently 
are being uh, stripped of funds more than they are given. So it is imperative that we find ways to generate more funds. Under Biden's administration, terms have been changed in policy where uh, funds were allocated for specifically for HBCUs. And I spoke about this in a, in a video before. Uh, I can't remember exactly which one it was. But anyway, the funds, and, and this was something that has, has happened in the recent last year or two, where funds have been stripped or reallocated to be more inclusive now of uh, white institutions whereas in the past those funds were were allocated sp specifically for HBCUs and so what they did was change the terminology and the policy so that it would, it would uh, now be inclusive of all universities and so let's just say if there was a hundred million dollar pot of money that the government was willing to give to minorities so how they went back and re, and re my minority service in all uh, universities, which would be primarily HBCUs, right? Because black people are considered minorities. HBCUs pretty much service the minority community, minorities. All right. So what they did was when they when they when they when they changed the terminology, what it did was reallocate the funds to to any minority service in university. So now. You have schools like Yale and Harvard and, you know, all your Ivy League schools and North Carolina, South Carolina, um, your Miami, your, all your college, your collegiate um, levels are now able to obtain a piece of their pie. That's first. And so that breaks the money down because now it has to trickle out into, into more hands. So therefore, HBCUs will be cut. That's one way that we've been cut. Amidst, amid, amongst many. So uh, let's just look at that first point. All right. Now let's go to the second point, B. The history of the HBCUs program and recruitment uh, and scholarships and availability and recognition. Uh, a lot of time, let's just say, okay, a lot of us wonder why a lot of HBCUs don't don't recruit a lot of um, local talent. Well, in a lot of cases, it's because that local talent on the high school level hasn't fulfilled obligations for the NCAA rules and regulations. And that's due to the lack of understanding amongst the coaching, you know, coaching staff and administrators. Because they should be the ones that implement this. I mean, these kids don't know. And these kids are actually generating funds by going out here on Fridays and whatever nights they play and filling these stands. So the school has an obligation to them as well to help put them in the, in the best predicament possible. But that's being failed because of the lack of understanding. That's one. Um, also, in the black community, I mean, we have less, so therefore we have less to give. And there are funds a lot of time that we have that we 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 really want to have fun with. So therefore, we have less boosters, and we have less um, fruitful alumni. Like our alumni doesn't have the type of monies that a um, USM or you know one of these white institutions may have. Even though they may be from the same region, the the, the money is astronomically different. Um, let's just take for instance with Colorado the amount of money that Colorado spends out of its budget each year to pay its administration um, that money alone is probably the entire budget for multiple HBCUs put together like this probably the bottom line all they even have all together whereas this school pays this out as an annual salary so it's you know, it's no comparison. There's no comparison. Not only that, talent goes unrecognized at HBCUs because of the lack of media attention. The media doesn't seek HBCUs for one because they don't have the talent. So it's a case 22. You know what I'm saying? Like the media is not coming to the HBCUs as regular, 
regularly as they would these Division One schools because the Division One schools have all the talent. The Division One schools can afford all the talent, not only just because of uh, because of because of its ability uh, to provide scholarships, which is another thing, but it also is more attractive because they they do have the more attractive names when it comes to coaching or campuses. So, you know, and the thing, the incentives that, 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 that now you have the uh, NIL deals, you know what I'm saying? Who gonna give me the best shot and making the most money? So that's what you have now. And sad to say, you know, it's true, but it's sad. And now let's look at the history of Dion. Dion Sanders, uh, what, two-time champion? I mean, superstar, two, a two sport superstar. You feel me? Like baseball and football simultaneously. And not just playing those sports, but playing them at a very high elite level. Both sports. Like actually hitting, I think, a home run and scoring a touchdown in the same week or so, you know. Not many players have ever done that before. I think maybe, I don't even think Bo Jackson did that. And he was quite elite at both sports. Anyway, I mean, highly accoladed player, and he has a track history for, for being a, a pretty good coach with the kids at his school. And, uh, you know, now the history with him at Jackson State. Uh, a spiritual guy, always talking about God, always talking about God. Has, he has a very infectious personality, you know. If you're around Dion, it appears that you're gonna be, uh, 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 you, you gotta be lively. You gotta be, you know, true and genuine. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he's a great leader because first he keeps God first, and then he also always promotes family. I love that. We have such a lack of representation from black fathers in our black community. And I'm not saying it's all our fault, but I'm just saying the lack thereof is disgusting and it's detrimental. It's not helping us. So to have one on a major uh, scale as, as Dion, showing us that you can do it. You can be a great father. You can lead your sons to be great and greater. It's, it's, it's a blessing. It's a, it's a big blessing. And there's a, there's a lot of things I can say about Dion, man. I mean, as to add to his character, I mean, a great guy, a wonderful guy. I ain't saying nobody perfect, you know. But he's a great guy. And not only just how great he is, but how recognized he is, how, 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 how important he is. Like, he created a movement. And so today, my, it, with the issue that at hand that I have, I mean, first of all, let me take my hat off to Dion and his sons and his daughter, you know, for all the transitions they've been through, for going to Colorado and actually performing at a high level. Both of y'all, both all of you all, I love it. I thank God for you all because you all have opened the door to things that wouldn't have been opened had it not been for someone like you or your magnitude. It's a good thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm cheering you on, Dion. I'm cheering you on, Shador. I hope that you all go far. I hope that you all, you know, in the NCAA, I think I think that you can. But here's my problem with it. Here's my problem with the decision to leave HBCU. Dion, when you started off, you started off on a good path. You, had, you, you started off on a good note. You started a movement throughout HBCU and throughout the world, like you shook up the world. When you brought Travis Hunter to Jackson State, a number one recruit, something that's never happened in history, that was major. And we respect you for that and we love you for that. You encourage kids to come and support HBCUs in their movement and movement to, 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 to help grow our own community. And it was a great movement, it was a great suggestion, it was, it was it's, 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 it's still a good thing. However, you choosing to leave in year three from Jackson State for whatever be the case, you know, you, they say, you know, you exposed how there was a lot of stealing going on, da 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 And see, that's another thing I don't like. When we are so fast and so quick to expose how we fall short, things that we may be doing under the table. 
but please let it be known. Please let it be known. I, I guarantee you there's some underhanded things going on in Colorado. Let me say this first. Colorado didn't even have the money to pay Deion Sanders, right? They admitted that by mission. Deion Sanders making 5.4 million some dollars odd dollars a year. I don't know, I think his contract was 30, almost 30 million, 28 million, something like that. These people came up with uh, more than 20 million dollars in less than 15 days. Let me tell you the power of alumni. And does that tell you the power of Dion? Dion, you are the bag. You could go anywhere and do what you're doing right now. I don't think that, I'm not saying that Colorado didn't need you to get in the wind columns, but I think they were doing okay financially. But what you just did was, for your $5.4 million a year, you just increased their network by hundreds of millions of dollars. I think when I did the math on one game, I think it was against South, the game coming up against South Carolina, I mean, uh, South uh, California, Southern Cal. Cheapest ticket is about 300 bucks, as in the nosebleed. Um, the stadium holds about 50, 55,000 people. My math serves me correct. They stand to make millions. So basically in one game, in one game, I don't want to quote the number, but I know it's over million. It's millions. Uh, but in one game, they stand to make enough money and plenty more to cover Dion's salary for the year. I think they have eight home games. So basically, they'll be going into the black maybe around game two, game one, game two. That means they'll be coming out of the deficit that for O and Dion, and they'll be going into uh, gain. They'll be actually gaining money. I'm not saying anything wrong about Colorado because it's business. It makes sense. My problem is that this this same energy and the same type of monies, or maybe not as much, but in due time, this type of money could have been generated HBCUs like Jackson State. Not only that, the ability to encourage number one, number one, prospects to come to an HBCU. It's not easy. And for they have Dion to come and do that and to show that, to get to lay that blueprint, it's major. But Dion, I, I don't think that you you really thought it all the way through as far as, you know, like when you create a movement, you can't just start a movement and then once it gets the movement, you being the leader, you, you bail out and then you do what? You actually do exactly what others have done in the past and you sold out. Jackie Robinson, you sold out the Negro League. Now, yeah, we commend him and we, we praise him and we all, you know, give our kudos and kudos to Jackie Robinson. And, you know, those, all of those barrier breakers. But the truth of the matter is, it was to serve a greater purpose for some other community and not ours. Because the Negro League was doing well. But when they started losing attention, and the attention started going over here rather than there, then they started losing money. And I mean, without money, you can't sustain. The same thing for the HBCUs. Dion, you already know, most HBCUs are on the brink of closing. They're on the brinks of closing the doors because they can't make any money. They don't have the government assistance that other schools have. The monies that they used to get, they don't get anymore. Some of the money that they used to get now is being split between them and these powerful institutions. So my thing is, black people, and I know everybody gonna hate me for saying this because we all about getting the bag. But at what point is, 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 is it a, for a greater cause than just the bag? Because one person getting rich off of this ain't gonna help change the world or the spectrum of the black community. We need somebody that's wholeheartedly invested, wholeheartedly invested in black people. Someone of the same magnitude as a Dion. 
the uh you have a a magnetic draw on people you have a you have credentials out the ass you i don't think nobody could give a better resume yeah, you didn't have the experience on the collegiate level as far as coaching. But it's bigger than coaching. Dion is bigger than any coach that you could think of. Simply because, no matter whether he's winning or losing, but especially because he's winning. And he's been proven to be a winner. He's going to put asses in the stadium. That's money. And that's how you keep the doors open. That's how you keep the lights on. I ain't mad at Dion. But I'm mad at his decision. just chase the bag because I feel like he could have brought that type of same type of money to Mississippi, to Jackson State. And I'm all I'm an organite. But at the same time, I'm all about my people. The HBCUs, they need you, Dion. They needed you. And you knew that. But I understand you're trying to make sure you lace your pockets and give your son the best opportunity. But that's what we were supposed to be showing the world. That we could do the same thing from an HBCU. And you would have wanted to do it. If anybody could have done it. That was the perfect slate. Anyway, I hope that you all stay up and stay good, good people. I am a determined black man. Stay humble. Stay good. Stay. Hold on, let me, let me say it right. I hope that you all stay up, stay humble, stay good, good people. Until the next time, I am a determined black man. John Jay, y'all make sure y'all hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already done so. And hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I drop any hot new content to this channel. Y'all stay up. I'm out. What?